let's talk about the consumer's market. Bolali Agbaji, as I introduced earlier, uh, one of the research analysts at Financial Derivatives Companies Live here at our headquarters studios here in Lagos. Thank you so much, Bolanle. Uh, these are looking like very interesting times. I want it to be very mild when I say interesting times. <laughs> when we look at what has been said over the last 24, 48 hours, and if we roll that back a little bit, what have been expectations on higher electricity tariff? Now we have VAT going to 7.2. The initial thought was 7.5, yeah. if you remember. Yes. So where we are with 7.2%, states need to return nearly 700 billion naira to the Central government. Bank, yeah. Minimum wage is 30,000. Is looking, uh, is, bl is blinking at the government. It has to be paid. The president says it should be paid. The states are squeezing their hands on where to find 614 billion. <laughs> Uh, to repay is going to be direct debiting by From, fact. The yes. finance minister is not blinking. Zainab Remove wants all that, the money yeah. in. She's the one walking the tightrope. She needs to mimic revenue and ensure spending. This is a tight one for consumers. How difficult are the things out there if you put it on the goodies and the downers table? I, I think it's it's extremely going to be difficult at the moment, considering the fact that you know GDP had declined and we do expect you know more counter cyclical policies. But right now we're having pro cyclical policies that are leading to you know even further downturn. But um, I do understand where the government is moving you know towards you know in the sense of generating income within the economy. But I, I, I think you know you increasing VAT is only going to affect the poorer end of the, uh, uh, the the economy, so it's going to increase the income gap. So I don't think it's something we need to, you know, uh, impose at this at this. Comments moment. are already on social media, on Twitter, and I'm checking some big names already saying, look, we should have pursued perhaps the luxury yes. goods tax yes. on the Which, wealthy tax. Yes. It was Jonathan's administration yes. that mooted the idea or floated the idea of the luxury goods tax. If you have big private jets, you drive big SUVs, yes. you yeah. live in big houses, you have Rolex wristwatches, whatever, <laughs> you need to pay if you come if you consume champagne or those uh, yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, so, because very big. V so that why are we do because the VAT goes to the poor man on the street who is buying bread, yes. gala, whatever, soft drinks, is consuming. Uh, at school, children, households is going to feel this. Yeah, so for those who don't know, VAT is usually a regressive tax. So it definitely affects the lower end of the um, um, spectrum. But, you know, the luxury tax is more progressive. And that's why, you know, most people usually tend to use that as a way to um, um, increase revenue within the economy. But at the same time, if you look at increase, imposing um, um, luxury tax, I don't think the issue is whether we impose luxury tax or VAT tax. It's the collection of this tax. You know, you have more taxes evaders within the system. Nigerians are not used to paying tax. Although we mentioned... Uh, uh, let's, go, uh, let's go about some of the revelations yes. from Amcon and the rest. Yes. Uh, some folks' houses were seized and suddenly they came up with 500 million plus Naira uh, to get their houses back. Okay. That looks like the big folks, the elite, has the money. They can afford to pay. So, But this is going to go down the bottom of the pyramid. It's 7.2%. In terms of where do you folks see inflation here? Your forecast for inflation for well, August is a little bit optic. Optic, yes. We do expect inflation to, you know, inch up marginally to about 11.15%. And why? Because we had seen the partial closure of the borders. And as a result, we saw uptick in uh, food prices, turkey, chicken, you know, some of these uh, rice, yeah, I especially. I just want to put well. that on the screen right now for our viewers to see uh, what the market price is. Your survey, I love yes. it. And this is a very good time for folks to get ready for what will be the likely. Uh, impact of the 7.2% VAT. There's no deadline yet as to when this when will they take would, up. Yes. But it's going to take place anything between now and the new year. Yes, that yes. way anyone can show it's going to be likely a happy new year. Uh, but that's my wish. But, but, you know, but that's going to come before the end of the year. These are market prices. Yeah, and these, the, these are the goods that you know, most of these low-income earners will be spending most of their money on. You know, the lower, in, the lower end, they don't actually save. So you know, most of that is actually consumed. Well, what do you save out of 18,500 minimum yeah. wage? Even at 30,000? Well, even at that, if you think about the minimum wage, it means that with this you know, increase in VAT, yeah. the effect of the minimum wage will be neutralized because you're increasing what the tax they're going to be paying on this new minimum wage. So in, in Definitely. They, it, so the government gives you the right hand and collects it back through the left hand. Exactly. That's what exactly. That's what it is. As someone anyway. on social media on Twitter says, the government give it and government take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's Abim Bala Matola there on Twitter this morning. Just before I came on it. So the government give it and government yes, uh, take yeah. it. Yes, yeah. So it's, it's, it's not really, it's, it, the, the, the policies are misplaced in a sense. It, it looks like a very tough time out yeah, there. Yeah, Let's check in with the oil market. Uh, 
projection for next year budget is $55 a barrel. The finance minister and budget minister look at the numbers and say that we need to get a lot more realistic. With, Meantime, yes. our production assumptions is also lower than the previous year, 2.18 million barrels per day. This is the time to get prepared. Some of the uh, Trafigura yesterday is looking at $50 a barrel. Some yeah. folks is going to be 30 next year. Yeah, so what he means is that, you know, more would actually be saved in the excess crude accounts. And, you know, they're being more realistic about where oil prices are moving. That's towards. if we stay above 50. If we stay above 50, yeah. About 55, we'll definitely say between 55. If Considering the price now at 61, we'll definitely have... But in terms of production, our in, output? Well, in terms of production, we're already, you know, part of the output cut anyways. And with the new Saudi oil minister, he means, he means business with, you know, defending oil prices. So we do expect more production cuts in, in the next... Uh, few months mm. so i think that's where you but it's 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 good that the you know the the new budget is trying to you know be realistic with its assumptions which we've always you know been a pro uh, which we've always want, wanted in any fact mm. let us get back to the the vat because i'm sure i'm speaking to uh we're speaking to hundreds of millions yes. of, of uh, we're speaking to millions and millions of nigeria as uh, right on air right now they're trying to Get ready. We don't know when the VAT will come in. So let's get back to the big story. It's the big elephant in the room because then we're going to deal with the food subsidy. That electricity tariff yeah. will go up sometime between now and the end of the year. Somehow, somewhere along the line, we've got to deal with it. Yeah, well, well you, we keep spending. We keep, we keep, you know, demanding more from some of these, uh, you know, low-income earners. And it, it will definitely impact on the future of the economy, the GDP figures that we, you know, some of these, some of these policies that are not, you know, helping to boost the growth within the economy. So that's, I think that's where we are when it comes to, you know, the VAT. Do you think we should just be prepared for this? Yes, definitely, definitely. It's, it's, it's time to, but I, at the same time, I think the government needs to actually roll back some of these policies to make sure that, you know, we, we, we find ourselves in, in such a situation. A few things can't wait, Balanli. Minimum wage can't wait. <laughs> Labor is... No, is... minimum wage definitely can't wait. So minimum wage is, is usually the counter-cyclical measure, yes. but it seems like the VAT that they've imposed right now is going to be rolling back, you know, the, the, the impact of the minimum wage within the So system. it's going to be very difficult. Yes. It's a very a... big big, big vehicle, a tire like a truck yeah, tire. And, I do and you're rolling it uphill and it's rolling back and trying to push it up. Yeah, and I do understand where the government is with this because at the same time, they're the looking for ways... The government is walking a tight yes, yes, There's no it, money. Every, there's no money. Let's take a break. Let's take a break. See you <laughs> next time. Thank you so Thank much. You.